means that God is going to work in your life. And he says, look, you have a lot of freedom in your life. But he says this, make sure that you don't indulge the sinful nature. Make sure you're doing things that God would want you to do in your freedom. Make sure that you're doing your best to live for him. And notice this, instead of living for yourself, rather serve one another in love. Remember that passage we read about the guy who came to Jesus and he said, what's the most important thing? Jesus said, love God and then you love one another. You look for opportunities to be a blessing to somebody else. How can you help somebody, even somebody sitting next to you in, the, in, this, uh, in your row today? My brothers, we're called to be free. I love this verse. What does God want? Okay, that's a good question. What do you want from me, God? What do you want me to do if I give my life to you? Well, how do I do that? Well, look at Micah 6, 8. He says, I have shown you, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you. Notice this. To do, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. To be just. To, to live a right life. To follow God in a right manner. To live for Him obedience. To love mercy. You know, I love this because so many times we have to cut each other a, a break. Isn't that true? Uh, this is so true in a married couple's life, right? Um, when you're married, you know that you have to forgive, right? It, isn't that true? And the longer you are married, the longer, the more times you're going to have to forgive. And, and, and it's true in life that there's going to be times where we just have to show mercy to one another, something that they may not even deserve. We just show mercy. Why do we do that? Because God does it for us each and every day. I'm glad God doesn't just uh, put his finger on us and get rid of us when we blow it. He's merciful to walk humbly with our God. God, I'm going to depend on you. Notice the third thing. Third thing that happens when we put Jesus first is this. I have freedom to hope in the future. I have freedom from my past. God gives us freedom to walk in the present. And we have freedom to hope in the future. Now, I love this verse in Philippians. Let's read it out loud together. We're almost done. Let's have some enthusiasm in here. You guys ready? I'm ready. Yes. Guys awake? Yes. Look at the person next to you. See if they're awake. Good, good, good. If they moved, they're awake. Unless they fell over from sleeping. Philippians 1.6 says this. Let's read it out loud. For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Now, if God is in your life, the Apostle Paul says this, I'm confident that God will continue to work in your life until you meet Jesus face to face. Or until he comes back one day. I'm confident that he will help you to become the man or woman, the husband or wife, the father or, uh, or, or daughter or father or son, mother or daughter. He will help you to become everything that he's created you. Be. And you can have hope in that. God, you haven't abandoned me. You are here with me. You will never leave me. One of the things that I've noticed is that Jesus gets a bad rap in the world. You know, Jesus is, uh, you know, he's too narrow. Uh, he, he's going to make me uh, do something I don't want to do. He just wants to put a guilt trip on me. I, I just want you to notice what the Bible itself says. John 3, 17, the scripture says, God did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but the, that the world might be saved through him. You know, God didn't send Jesus to judge the world, to make you feel bad about who you are, but to save you and to, to ha help you to have eternal life. It's God's desire for everyone to go to heaven. And, but the thing about that is, it, it, then again, it becomes our choice. Remember the young guy? Jesus, what do I have to do to go to heaven? Here's Jesus' response. Go get rid of what's more important than me in your life. Then you come and follow me. The guy's response lowered his face. He was sad. He walked away from Christ. The Bible tells us, doesn't tell us if this ever guy ever changed his mind again. He just got this footnote about his life. That here he is, and he just said no to God's invitation for heaven. 
I would just encourage you not to say no to God's invitation for you. 2 Corinthians says this about all of us. He says, we know that our body will be destroyed. Okay, one day, we're going to die. One day, we're going to go and we're going to be face to face with Jesus one day. We know that our body will be destroyed. But when that happens, notice this, those who put Jesus first, when that happens, God will have a house for us. It will not be a house made by human hands. Instead, it will be a home in heaven that will last how long, guys? Forever. Forever. There is hope knowing that if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, that this world is not the end. That one day we're going to go and we're going to live forever. Right now, it's just the warm-up act. It's spring training to the real game when we go and be with God forever. I love what the Apostle John writes about heaven, and I just want to show you this picture, this glimpse of what heaven is going to be like, so that hopefully you'll want to go there. Notice what he says. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. Have you ever see your bride walking down the aisle, how beautiful she was? Have you ever been to a wedding? You saw that? Everyone stands up. And they all watch the bride walk down the aisle. Well, the scripture says that this heaven, this new heaven that's going to come out of the sky is going to be like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And notice what he says. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, now the dwelling of God is with men.